Hey guys, welcome back to another pattern testing video. Today we're gonna test out my Browning A512 gauge with the molar chokes. I have the H2O decoy choke and I'm gonna start with that. And today I'm gonna do something a little bit different than I've been doing in these last few videos that I've put out. I'm going to shoot three different types of ammo, which it's all gonna be heavy shot, but it's gonna be heavy bismuth, heavy metal extreme, and heavy metal long range. Those are the three ammos I shoot out of my 12 gauge. Uh, situational dependent, but I wanna know what each of them does. I'm going to first start with the Chase Waterfowl pattern board, which I talk about all the time. Guys, check them out at chasewaterfowl.com. Great pattern paper, and they've got all different kinds of targets, different widgeon, mallards, till, all that kind of stuff, so it's pretty cool. I really like them, I, I use them all the time as you see on these videos, but what I have never done, and I've been doing on all these videos talking to you guys about, is shooting my Browning A5 without a choke at 15 yards to check the barrel. Again, if you haven't seen those past videos, you're probably saying, are you crazy? You're shooting your gun without your choking it, you're gonna mess up the threads. It's actually scientifically impossible to do that. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is my last, hunting shotgun that I have not done that on yet. As much as I've patterned that shotgun, I've actually never done it without the choke in it at 15 yards, check the barrel, make sure everything's good and that the fit's right. I'm gonna do that sitting and, and rested, then I'm gonna do it standing, then I'm gonna put the choke in and I'm gonna shoot back at 20 yards. I say 20, this is just my personal opinion, but because there's so much at 20 yards, there was so many pellets in it, I felt like a lot was overlapped and I'm not getting a true count. So I'm gonna go back to 25 because when I did that before, when I was at 25 yards, I feel like I got a better pellet count because when you're so close, it just seems like you can't really get a good read on it. So I'm gonna go back to 25 yards. Heavy bismuth is my main ammo that I shoot out of that 12 gauge. So I'm gonna focus a little bit more on that. But like I said, I am gonna shoot the heavy metal extreme and the heavy metal long range, the original heavy metal. I'm not gonna shoot as many shells. I think what I'm gonna do is wait till 40 yards with those. So basically I'll do the heavy bismuth first at 25 and 40 and we'll decide how many I'm gonna shoot by if my shoulder can take all those shots. And then after that, I'm gonna do the heavy metal extreme and then the heavy metal long range at 40 yards and I'll shoot probably four each of those or five. I wanted to mention to you guys that you should really check out these choke wrench from Muller that he made. He designed them himself fabricated himself he's got a patent on it and it's pretty slick um, I'll show you later on in the video how it works it's it's pretty ingenious to be honest with you but I have a 12 gauge one and he sells the other types as well before we start don't forget we have a great podcast it's waterfowl military life ammo um, Jimmy Miller comes on there all the time and talks about so many things on how to help us be better shooters and have a uh, better luck out in the field. People have said, Titus, you're not on video, tell me the truth. Do you really think they're that good? And I say yes every time, it does. All right, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be putting it on here, number one. Number two, I wouldn't shoot it for myself. Maybe that's number one, I wouldn't shoot it for myself and I definitely wouldn't be putting it on here. These are on all my guns, this is the last one that I've gotta finish. It's on my 28 gauge and my 20 gauge. I'm doing my 12 right now. I don't shoot it as much as I used to. I basically shoot a 20 and a 28 all the time, but I want to get this gun dialed in as well. I want to see what it does, and yes, I do love it. So if you want to get a molar choke, you're interested in it, I got a link down in the description. I also got a link in the first comment I pinned. That makes it easy for you. You click on it, it takes you right to the site. You can put in the code MVM2024. I got it right here at the bottom of the screen. Put that in at checkout and you get 10% off. Let's get started. All right, no choke in the Browning A5 as you can see. Let's go ahead and shoot three or four shots and see what it looks like. Heavy bismuth, three inch six shot. All right, as you can see, it's a little bit slightly left. Anyways, we'll see. I'm gonna stand and shoot three shots with the new paper as mounted, you know, and see what we look like there. As you can see, it's kind of interesting. It is a little bit low and left, but that is with no choke. And I, what I've noticed is once you have the choke in, it's always a little different. So it's funny though to me because I put the bigger front beat on as a quick cheater way to stop shooting high because I was always shooting high. And all my other patterns, I had a little bit of a higher pattern. So it's kind of throwing me off a little bit uh, without the without a choke in it it's shooting low so interesting just shows how much chokes can change things so i'm going to throw in the invector ds decoy h2o molar choke i am going to go ahead and shoot this at 15 yards with this in rested three shots and just see what it looks like since it's kind of low and a little low and left to me so let's try that out and for those that are watching say oh man 
You probably messed your gun up. Let's see if this choke goes in okay. So no choke. Run the muller in. Oh, that's not funny. Just drop right in. No problem. There we go. Hand tight, ready to go. These are one and three eighths ounce loads too, by the way. Uh, that looks pretty good. Money. That looks clean and it doesn't look like it's bad one way or the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to 25 yards. I'm gonna shoot four shots. Probably at 40s where I'll shoot five shots. Before I shoot this next round, let me show you how slick this uh, choke wrench is. Okay, so it's rubber with a, got a spinner right there. Spot to put your finger in and spin it. Put it inside, turn it till basically that rubber flares out. Kind of hard, I'm trying to do it with one hand here. So that rubber's flaring out, tighten it. Then you take this. Put it in. Hand tightened, loosen this up. Done. All right, we're at 25 yards. Gonna shoot four shot. Shot two. Shot three. Shot four. Once again, that looked really, really good. And at 25 yards, that's exactly what I would want my pattern to look like. So I'm gonna move back to 40. We're gonna count all these and show you guys all these at the end. I do have the UFO with me. I've thought about trying a couple shots of, of that too. I don't have the passing right now, otherwise that's probably what I would do, but I am gonna throw that in with the bismuth just out of curiosity because bismuth opens up super quick because it's soft so i don't know maybe i will use that ufo choke when i'm specifically shooting heavy bismuth depending on the situation of the hunt love that pattern what i got at 25 we'll count at the end and then we'll move to 40 and i'll show you as we change ammos and also if i change that choke I'll let you know You guys think I'm gonna go get it and do on to the next one I'm really happy with that pattern for the fun of it and for curiosity's sake I'm gonna throw in the molar h2o UFO choke so it's usually for turkeys or shots from 60 to 70 but I have noticed with bismuth it does open up a lot more right so I'm just curious for future reference I want to throw this in I'm gonna shoot four shots at 40 yards just to see what this looks like compared to the decoy um, like I said, I don't have the passing right now. I think they're in stock now. I just haven't got a chance to get one. But anyways, since I have this, I'm already back here. Before I switch ammos, I want to shoot the heavy B at 40 yards with the UFO choke. Let's see what it does. All right, we're done with the heavy bismuth. Now we're going to try the heavy metal extreme. And what this is, this is 12 gauge, three inch, with four shot tungsten and one shot steel. I personally, I'd rather have the three and six, um, but this is what I got right now. So it's a one and a quarter charge at 1450 feet per second. Ain't gonna be a ton of uh, pellets on this one, but we'll try this one out. It's fun seeing the results, it ain't fun doing the process. Counting, changing papers, but here we are, last one I'm gonna try for the day. My 12 gauge is the heavy metal, longer range, three inch, four shot. It is going at 1,500 feet per second and one and a quarter ounce shot charge. So we're gonna shoot five shots of this and then the next thing you're gonna see is me giving you the results after two hours of counting. <laughs> no, hopefully it won't take that long, but let's see what this looks like. Nice, forgot to put the earplugs in. All right, after about legitimately, probably about an hour of counting, I had five papers to count and um, the results are kind of surprising, honestly. Just be prepared to see that all these patterns are a little low and left. And actually at 40 yards, it was 42 or 50 patterns. So, but the deal is, um, somebody asked us on the last video on the 28 gauge, 
and I'll just answer it here because maybe the same person will watch this video. They said, where are you aiming? And I, I'm sure everybody has their own idea of what's right, what's wrong, as usual with anything. I never considered myself, when I hear people say they're floating the bird, I think of it, and I'll pop a picture up on the screen, what I think of floating it is. I don't know if this is what people are referring to. This is what I vision floating as. I don't feel like I float it. I put it on the bird, but when I'm aiming at these papers, the top of my bead is touching where the crosshairs meet. So the top of my bead is touching that. I'm not burying it where I can't see. Some people say they put it right on it and bury it and make that bead center on it. That's not how I shoot. Although when a bird's crossing from left to right, I kind of line that up that way. So it's kind of weird. This is for me, like people, some may, people say I'm crazy and I'll show this to you here in a second, but I did just want to go over this since that was some questions asked on that last video. If a bird is going left to right and I'm leading it, then I guess the center of my bead would be in the center of the flight path of that bird. If a bird is hovering over the decoys and not moving either way, up or down, left or right, I guess I basically am floating it in a way. I don't feel like I'm floating it. I'm touching on the bird still. I'm basically putting it right on it. So just letting you guys know that the pattern is a little low and a touch left, but the patterns are still amazing. And uh, let's just go ahead and look at those right now. All right, starting off, here we go. That is 25 yards, 12 gauge, heavy bismuth, three inch, six shot with the molar decoy choke. I got a 256 pellet average. Like I said, you can tell it's light up here. You can tell it's a, it's, it's like this, right? I'm still really happy with that. I'm not gonna shin it. I, I'm really not, because especially after I look at what 40 yards looks like, I'm happy with that pattern. Because you know on the 28 gauge, I did shim it because I was like, no, this is too low. But this, this ain't enough to bother me. Now let's go ahead and move to 40 yards with the decoy. Look at this. Again, you can tell it's lower. I was gonna mention too, my bead is actually bent. <laughs> I guess I should have said that at the beginning, but my bead is actually bent. I'm gonna put another one on there and I think that might be part of why it's a little bit left. I really do. Twisted, if that makes sense, because it's a aftermarket one. 40 yards with the decoy, right? This is supposed to be, you know, you're not supposed to shoot that far, which you, you are, I'm just being sarcastic, but 137 average. The funny thing is, that's what my 28 gauge is with the passing at the same distance. But you gotta remember though, this is the decoy choke. So why not have a more of an open pattern at 40 yards and have less room for error with this gun? Could I go tighter with this gun? Yeah, I could for sure. But since it is a 12 gauge and it does have more pellets, I'm like stoked with that because you only need 70 to 100 in a 30 inch circle and look at 137. That's literal gold right there. So that's 40 yards with the decoy choke, guys. People are like, why should I buy the decoy choke? You know, why should I buy that one? I need to, I gotta shoot birds at 40 yards. I need a passing. You don't need a passing. Now let's move on to the heavy metal long range. I was actually fairly happy with this for it being four shot. So here is the four shot heavy metal longer range. This got 104 average per shot. That's still over 70 to 100 mark. So that's still really good. And if you wanna go with the bigger shot, I mean, what's wrong with that? Now we're gonna to go to the heavy metal extreme. And you can see this definitely is low. Just look at the density difference between when you get four and one shots. Like I, that's why I'm not into the, the low shot like that. Like one shot, I mean, nah, I'm good. But that being said, we still got an average of 86 pellets in a 30 inch circle at 40 yards. So that's still good, still killing. But now you wanna hear, we'll end with something crazy here, but check this out. This is where you really see the heaviness on the bottom lower left side, but still look at the density of that, insane. I mean, if I knew I was taking 40 yard shots consistently, this is the choke I'd be shooting. Like if I knew I wasn't shooting in nothing in close, 100%. 40 to 50 yard shots, which again, I'm not, 40 yards is at the top for me. Not saying I haven't shot past that, but anyways, look at that, man. That is gnarly. <laughs> that is so gnarly. And look at, you're getting 209 pellets inside a 30 inch circle with the Muller UFO choke at 40 yards. So that's a wrap for that, guys. Let me know your thoughts. I'm pretty happy with the pattern. I don't know what you guys think about it, but I'm really happy with it. I like it. The decoy choke with the heavy bismuth, and I do have these ammo, so I will be shooting them. Another killing machine. That's all my shotguns. Everything's dialed in. 
birds are gonna die this season. So best patterns I've ever had. If you guys want the discount, remember, like I said, go into the link below, you know, or you can just go to molarchokes.com, put in the code at checkout, MVM2024, and get 10% off. Hope you guys enjoyed these pattern videos. We'll see you guys on the next one.